And then I'd press the record button on my phone and I'd record you and I'd record me just after it, just small parts, sometimes even just one or two notes. Um, when you, I was recording on the phone, I could then be sure that it was the same quality of sound and then think, oh my God, is that what I just did? Oh, I love it. Hey, g'day, it's Nigel Lee from Sax School. Hey, thanks for joining me for another video. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while or if you're a member of Sax School, you'll know that I love to help other people learn saxophone and you know over the years we've helped tens of thousands of students to get better on saxophone but even though I've been teaching so many people over the years from all different places around the world I still love the stories that I hear back from students when they're making really great progress and that clip from the start is one of our members Sue that I wanted to tell you about today. So Sue's been learning with sax school for just a short period of time but man it's so inspirational what she's managed to achieve on her saxophone in that short period of time, even though she's had some hurdles along the way. So today what I want to do was share a little bit about her story. I've got some footage from an interview I filmed with her just recently. And then I want to give you four takeaways that you can learn from Sue's experience that you can apply to your playing. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you're a seasoned pro, I think these four takeaways will help you at whatever level you're at right now. So it's gonna be loads of fun today. Let's get stuck in. Hey, thanks for joining me for another one of these videos. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to the channel too so you find out about new videos that we're doing. Okay, so let's have a chat about Sue's story. Now, we run a monthly thing in Sax School where we have a, a student of the month and Sue is our student of the month this month. So as I'm filming this, it's January 2022. And uh, we singled her out, myself and all the other tutors, we got together and we thought, wow, what Sue is doing is incredible. But it was even more amazing when I actually spoke with her and found out more about her story. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So just a bit of backstory before we get into the footage, Sue decided to start learning saxophone as a more mature learner during the whole COVID crisis. And uh, she lives in the north of France, so very cleverly actually, the first thing she did is she went to a local music shop and she arranged to rent a Yamaha 280 alto saxophone, which is actually a really great choice if you're looking for you know, a beginner saxophone. Hey, if you need some more tips on choosing a beginner saxophone or choosing a used saxophone, there's lots of different options. We've actually got a used saxophone buyer's guide. You can get it from our blog and I'll put a link up here. So that's really where the fun and game started. And maybe this was because of COVID, but the music shop pretty much just gave her the saxophone and she spent that first week scratching her head, trying to work out how to even put the saxophone together, let alone how to play some songs. But anyway, it doesn't matter because after that she discovered sax school and then we helped her get on track. So that's kind of where we pick up the story. So you, you started on the two, the Yamaha 280 yeah. and am I right in thinking you've now bought a saxophone? You're not yeah. renting anymore? No, I decided that I was able to do it and I bought um, the 62, the Yamaha 62. Um, the other one had such a vibration. It was obviously an old rented one to hundreds of people okay. being used. And the other one had very, very clunky uh, keys that didn't yeah. always press properly. But of course, I didn't know any better. So I thought it was normal. Um, yeah. and, and I couldn't get some of the lower notes. They were wavering a lot. So I think there was, I worked out later that probably there was a whole, um, not, you know, not shutting properly. Yeah, a bit of a leak. Yeah. It's really, really common. The saxophone that you've got though is 62. And that's it's the same yeah. as my alto over there. It's yeah. a it's a great saxophone. And, uh, you know, they- I hope really... I'll be able to keep it for quite a while and, and get some good stuff out of it. It's, it's quiet here, which is excellent because I don't upset my neighbors. Most of them live in Paris and they come down during the summer holidays only. Apart from during COVID last year, we had quite a few that were here all the time. Right. And I thought by keeping all the windows closed, they wouldn't actually be hearing me. But I was met in the, in the road the other day by one of the neighbors who lives sort of semi opposite, but the houses aren't too close together who said, you've made a lot of progress. And I thought, I thought well, <laughs> that means I must have been terrible before. That's fantastic. That's one of the first videos that Sue sent in for one of our masterclasses. I think she'd been playing for about seven or eight weeks by that point. 
so you can hear that she had a couple of hurdles at the start. And actually, she's not telling you, but she had a, she's got quite a few health issues that have made learning difficult for her as well. Notwithstanding all of that, though, Sue has made great progress. And through my conversation with her, I was trying to find out what was the thing that helped her to make this really fast progress. One of the things that we discovered was how she's making use of all of the resources inside SAC School. I think that's a key, really. Check this out. You've actually submitted a video to every single Spotlight session since you joined. You joined in June, July <laughs> onwards, everyone. I mean, I think that's awesome. So you've been really involved with the uh, master, like the student Spotlight Masterclass things that we do. Yeah, you've been I really involved yeah, with the community. Yeah, yeah. Super active on there. Yeah. 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 yeah, and connecting with other players. That's awesome. You've been doing the monthly challenges. I've been yeah. seeing the videos you've been posting for that. So you've really used all the you know resources inside SAC School, which is fabulous. I mean, that... I'm sure there's some I haven't discovered yet, but for the moment, yeah, I, I, I use a, a, well as much as I can. And yeah. I often listen to a theory lesson um, in bed just before I go to sleep or, oh, uh, awesome. or some of you, you the students playing um, just before I go to sleep. It was a nice relaxing um, I don't remember which student what it was now, but I listened to his music just when I went to bed last night. <laughs> That's brilliant. You're really digging into it. Yeah, I think you can get quite a lot of advice um, over because I mean, as soon as I had a question as a beginner, I'd, I'd, I'd post actually systematically. I started off on the starter program and a lot of your advice uh, was to uh, do the warm ups. Um, so I kind of almost from the start um, did the five minute. Well, I started with the easy warm up and then I did the five minute warm up and then the classical warm up. And I right. literally did them every day. Do you have a regular practice routine as well? Do you try and do it daily or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fit in a, a couple of hours around late afternoon-ish, where I mainly do, at the moment, I'm doing uh, overtones. There's a thing for, on overtones. And that part of it is kind of the nitty-gritty warm-up and trying to get the, the technical bits then and reading about yeah. anything technical. And then... Um, in the evening after dinner, which is late in France, we eat at eight usually, so it's more like nine, ten o'clock. I come up and play for one, two, three, depends how many, how I get carried away. And that's when I work on the pieces of music. Oh man, so inspirational to hear the amount of time that she's putting into a practice and the focus that she's got too, the way she's structuring a practice. But I wanted to just finish up by asking her if she had any tips for new players. So people that are just starting on saxophone, maybe this is you. What are some advice that she could pass on uh, of things that she's doing in her practice that would really help? Um, I think I could suggest to beginners that I didn't mention that I did, but I did a lot of that at the beginning, was actually listening to you, or Chris, I think he does some of the videos too, in detail by, I would listen, to, this was for the tone to start with, because when you're a total beginner, it's not easy to know what you're playing if it's coming out anything like it should do. So I would um, listen very carefully, try and imitate it, sometimes sing it and then play it. And then I'd press the record button on my phone and I'd record you and I'd record me just after it. Just small parts, sometimes even just one or two notes. And um, when you, I was recording on the phone, I could then be sure that it was the same quality of sound and then think, oh, my God, is that what I just did? So I'd come back and okay. I'd, I'd perfect it. And the same applies during um, songs that you would do. That I'm trying to learn, the, like the challenges. Um, there'll be a, a frequency that I can hear it's going up, but I'm not quite sure what's happening. So I listen again, then I try and I record it and I try use up a lot of recording space, but <laughs> I'm kind of forgetting to wipe them off. Oh, that's but, brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's really that's using... That really helps, yeah. Yeah, helps. awesome, Sue. Awesome. I mean, you're using technology there to really help you to mm. learn quickly, you know, with the resources that we've got, but learning by yourself. Absolutely fantastic. And I'd like to thank you because I think it's an excellent uh, structure that's going there. And I, I was just over the moon when I came across it because everything I would have imagined to be in, in a good school was there.
Wow, what an inspiring story. Hey, if you enjoyed Sue's story, let me know in a comment. I thought it was fantastic. And I forgot to mention actually that Sue's background in her career is actually as an English teacher. So she's been a teacher for decades. So for me, it was really great to hear her perspective on SAC school after spending years and years and years as a teacher herself. So it was really wonderful to get some good feedback from her. Okay, I promised you four takeaways, things that you can learn from Sue's experience and Sue's story, and that you can apply to your own learning process to help you learn faster. The very first thing is go get good help. Particularly if you're just starting your journey with saxophone, it's so important to seek out and get some really good help. It could be from sax school, it could be from another teacher. Most important though is that you're not scratching your head trying to work it out yourself. The second thing is it's really important that wherever you're learning that you make great use of all the resources. Now in sax school we do things like master classes, we've got uh, support from our tutors where you can ask questions, we've got a whole range of different types of lessons, help with how to structure your practice routine, we've got a really active community. There's like so many things inside there that our students have access to. And one of the reasons that Sue made such great progress is because she got involved with all the aspects of SAC school. So she's using all the resources. Now as teachers, whether you're learning from me or learning from somebody else, as teachers we build these amazing resources because we know that those are the things that help students to make the fastest progress. That's why my tutors and I have spent so much time building this incredible resource inside SAC School. But really, as a student, you need to use all those resources to get the main benefit from it. So make use of all those resources. Now, the next thing, which is super important, and you've probably heard this before, but it's great to get a reminder, be consistent. Be consistent with your practice. Sue was fortunate she could spend quite a long time practicing, and she can do now, she could, she's got time to spend in her practice. But the most important thing is not the amount of time she's practicing, but the fact that she's showing up every day and doing something, and that's helping her to get to her goals faster. So that's really important. And the fourth thing I wanted to mention to you is community. It's something that really helps Sue. She's learning remotely in you know, northern France. She hasn't got a lot of saxophone players around her, but she's connected to a lot of musicians through our community, and that really enhances her whole learning experience. It's something that we do inside SAC School that's really a big part of our learning process. So however you're choosing to learn, whether it's with SAC School or somehow, somewhere else, connect with, a, with other musicians so you can be around like-minded uh, people who are also going through the same journey you are, and you can share tips and techniques and skills and, you know, just support each other. It's so important. I really hope you found this video helpful today. I hope you enjoyed Sue's story. If you want to find out more about what we're doing inside SAC School, then go explore the other things on our blog and on the YouTube channel here. You can even try a 14-day trial. As I'm filming this, we have a 14-day trial running at SAC School. You can find that from the courses page on our website. I'll put a, a link down below as well. It's a great way to go and stick your toe in the water and see if SAC School is a good fit for you. Try out some lessons, get some support from the tutors, connect with the community. If it's a good fit, we'd love to welcome you with, with our uh, thousands of other students who are learning from all around the world at all levels too, from beginner right through to seriously advanced um, students. So. Go check that out if you're interested. But most important, I hope these four points that I've mentioned inspire you to take some action and really focus your learning on saxophone so that you can make some great progress in this coming week and over this coming year. So explore the other resources we have, get stuck in with your practice, have some fun, and I'll catch you next time.